What are you doing? Oh, hello. Welcome back. As you can see, we've got a little guest today. This is Coco. She's my Frenchie. But I'm going to skip the big boring intros because today is the final reveal. You guys get to see the painting all framed up at the end. So stay tuned and let's just jump straight into it. Let's get to it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe we're finally here. We're up to the very last video for this painting. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I kind of feel a bit, it's a bit daunting coming towards the end of a painting. Um, yeah, it's, it's like you've been working on this painting for however many weeks or months and you know what you're doing and then all of a sudden the painting's nearly over and you've got to start a new project from scratch. And I think it's the fear of the blank canvas. Like when you're staring at that canvas and there's nothing on it, it can be really, really overwhelming. There are ways around this. The most common is painting a wash of a burnt sienna or a neutral tone all over the canvas. This eliminates that stark white blank canvas and kind of helps you get a start. Back to the painting, I'm now blending all of these scaly bumps that I have put on the snail and just softening the edges between the two. So I know a lot of the common snails have their eyes on top of their antennae. However, when I sketched this out, in the correct way, he looked really, really freaky. So I went with the more cartoony style of having the eye on the head. That's the beauty of being an artist and being a creator is that you don't have to stick to the norm. You can make things look and feel the way that you want them to. There's no rules here. After a quick blow dry, I am using some drying retarda. I'm going to paint this all over the snail shell and it will help the paint stay wet for longer and make the blending of this shell a little bit easier. I can't tell you how many times I have painted the ridges on the snail's shell. I had about three or four photos of different types of snails as my reference photos, kind of taking a little bit from each type of snail. But looking back, each snail was different and I couldn't work out how I wanted my ridges to look. So I ended up just doing it sort of horizontal and curving it slightly to give that rounded effect. And I think it worked well. Adding in some highlights and drying it off before doing my final washes. I'm using a burnt sienna for the snail's body and adding in a little bit of black underneath the shell where that deepest, darkest shadow will be. I then use burnt umber to wash over the entire snail shell. I did water down that wash to do the second part of the snail shell just to keep it a little bit lighter than the rest. Some more touch ups of a wash over the snail body and over the shell. Adding in that defining line underneath the shell to enhance the shadow. And now for his eye, it's so tiny it takes no time at all. And there's the little highlight. I am doing one final wash over the snail just to add a bit more of a red tinge to the body. And now using a mix of burnt umber and black and watering that down for quite a thin glaze to add just a subtle cast shadow behind some of the objects. I haven't added cast shadows to every single item on the painting. If I had done that, it would have looked really crowded. 
And because there's no strong source of light, it only is a subtle cast shadow anyway. So we don't want to do too many and have it look too forced. Keep your eyes peeled for a bonus video this week. I am going to be going through the process I have used to put this painting into a frame. And here it is. It's all finished and all framed up. So it's all done. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments. And I have got a very new, not very new, very exciting new series coming up. It's going to feature wildlife animals with Australiana flowers. And of course, my clocks are going to be in there too. Oh.